Seeing none, it's now time for member statements. The member from Wellington, Holton Hills. Mr. Speaker, as members of this House know, for years we've been advocating for a bypass on Highway 6 around the community of Morriston in the township of Puslidge. I've been in Puslidge Township the past two weekends to attend public events. People there understand the Highway 6 Morriston bypass is urgently needed. The traffic bottleneck in Morriston directly impacts the safety of local residents. However, it extends beyond that. Because Highway 6 is such a key economic corridor, connecting the 401 to the Hamilton-Niagara region, as well as to the U.S. border. The traffic jams, which often stretch for kilometres, are costing our provincial economy millions of dollars each and every year. This was demonstrated in a University of Waterloo study conducted two years ago. Mayor Dennis Lever and Township Council have pushed strongly for the Highway 6 Morrison Bypass project. The County of Wellington, the City of Guelph, the City of Hamilton all support the Morriston Bypass. So do the Guelph and Hamilton Chambers of Commerce, as well as Tim Hortons, Maple Leaf Foods, Nestle Waters, Canada Bread and Cargill. I appreciate the interest that the Minister of Transportation has shown in our project. We're taking him at his word that he's pushing for it. And we know the Premier has also publicly acknowledged the importance of the Morriston Bypass in this very House. Based on my experience in the Legislature, I'm aware that the Ministry of Transportation will be preparing its pre-budget submissions right now. I urge the Minister to continue to push hard. We've been waiting for this project for a generation. Let's work together and get it done. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, member the member from Parkdale. Hi, Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yesterday, I was part of a, a joyous and yet serious uh, uh, assembly out on the front lawns of Queen's Park. Uh, about a thousand activists came together on very short notice to speak about climate change. I got to sing, which is always a pleasure, with the Raging Grannies. Uh, that was fun. Uh, and, uh, and, Mr. Speaker, they wanted me to come here today with a message. And I'm just going to quote from our friend uh, from the Toronto Star, Thomas Walkham, who said, The longer we postpone these actions, the more likely it is that we'll face mass flooding, drought, civil unrest, and other crises resulting from extreme weather, not to mention other things. Um, and he also went on to say, Much has been made of Ontario's decision to join Quebec and California in a so called cap and trade scheme to limit carbon emissions. But as his colleague Martin Reg pointed out, uh, Ontario has been uncomfortable unconscionably slow in attacking climate change and won't join the Quebec-California scheme until 2017. We need action, Mr. Speaker, and we need action now. We have a federal government that's going to Paris without any clear cap on their emissions, without any uh, willingness to have firm guidelines or legislation in place. The time for greenwashing is over, Mr. Speaker. The time for green action is now. Thank you. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. Across Canada, November marks Lung Health Month. Lung disease affects one in five Canadians. Sadly, lung cancer kills more Canadians than breast, colon, ovarian, and prostate cancers combined. In Ontario, 2.4 million people are living with asthma, COPD, and lung cancer, and this number is expected to grow to 3.6 million in the next 30 years. With these alarming figures and significant associated health care costs, we must do more to combat this terrible disease. I have first-hand knowledge of the toll it takes on patients and their families. My oldest son suffers from lung disease. Health care professionals are calling on our government to initiate a lung health strategy, and to that end, I presented Bill No. 41 last November entitled The Lung Health Act, and I encourage all members in the House to support it. One initiative that brings hope is the Ontario Lung Association's Breathing as One campaign. It calls for improved collaboration to move beyond traditional lung research and the battle against the disease. Lung health is important to all, and I know that all members join me in thanking the health care professionals and their providers for their work supporting those living with lung disease. Thank you also to the members who support the All-Party Lung Health Caucus and to my fellow co-chairs, the member for Elgin Middlesex London and the member for Nickel Belt. As Ontario Lung Association President, George Habib reminds us, when you can't breathe, nothing else matters. Thank you for the member's statement. The member from Bruce Bray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize the late Janice Bai. Ms. Bai, a native of Holstein, Ontario, was known in the Bruce Gray Owen Sound community as a great advocate for children. Over the two decades that Janice worked as a pediatric physiotherapist, 
She endeavoured to make a difference in the lives of thousands of young people. Many of them are society's most vulnerable children. Ms. Bai worked as a caregiver with Closing the Gap Healthcare Group, serving all schools in the Blue Water District School Board and its almost 20,000 students. Her work involved developing physiotherapy programs for special needs children, namely ensuring they were accommodated with proper seating and mobility devices. She assisted children recovering from medical procedures and those who were dealing with a loss of mobility, strength and endurance due to illness or injury. I'm told Ms. Bai was always brave, loving and energetic, embracing disability and diversity. Most people remember her for the overwhelming contribution of care, encouragement and compassion that she provided to local children and their families. After she died suddenly and tragically in a car crash last June, I heard from educational assistants, teachers and families whose children she supported through her work. They said, and I quote, Janice was infallible in her work and devotion to special needs children and truly gifted in her work and who will be deeply missed. Christina Schnell MacDonald, whose daughter Natalie was in Ms. Bai's care, personally reached out to me immediately to see if a special acknowledgement could be awarded to recognize Janice for her and again I quote, above the call of duty, personal care and commitment. She said, Janice was an amazing person and provided such wonderful care. We need people to know just how much of a difference she made in the life of Natalie and many, many others. Ms. Bai was posthumously recognized for her amazing life's work and bestowed the Heroes in the Home Award by the Southwest CCAC on October 20th in a ceremony at Stone Tree Golf and Fitness Club. Ms. Bai will be remembered in the hearts of all she touched as a caring and dedicated children's physiotherapist. And most of all, she'll be remembered for being the one who always went above and beyond her call of duty. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Kitchener, Waterloo. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to recognize a green manufacturing company in Waterloo Region that I had the pleasure of visiting on November 20th. Renewability Energy Inc. is the global leader in drain water heat recovery technology with their patented power pipe heat exchanger system. This year, they're celebrating their 15th anniversary. This technology reduces energy consumption by using outgoing uh, drain water to preheat incoming cold, fresh water. In Ontario, over 50,000 homes currently have this uh, technology. Technology. The power pipe is easily retrofit into homes and easily installed in new buildings. In fact, it requires no maintenance, lasts up to 100 years, and is about 10 times more cost-effective than solar water heating systems. Energy code credits for this technology are now available in Ontario, many states, the UK and Europe. In fact, Manitoba has recently made drain water heat recovery mandatory in all new residential construction, a change that's worth considering. However, this industry has been having problems in Ontario. Right now, drain water heat recovery has been excluded from the 2017 prescriptive compliance options for single-family and multi-family residential buildings. It's costing green manufacturing jobs in this province, something the government has suggested is a priority. It is my hope that the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing will recognize and fix the problem. Drain water heat recovery technology should be included in any potential energy retrofit program that will help Ontarians effectively and affordably reduce their carbon emissions. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you for your member statement from Barry. Thank you, Speaker. Last Saturday in the Great Riding of Barry, a local restaurant called Big Chris's Barbecue hosted the fourth annual Shoebox Project. The Shoebox Project is a charity that asks people to fill a shoebox with small luxury items for women at the local shelters. Each shoebox contains items valued at $50 or more that a woman would enjoy but not splurge on for herself in difficult times. Luxury items such as fancy socks, gift cards, lipsticks, and a variety of toiletries are welcomed by these women. These articles brighten the holiday season and let the women know that they are special and not forgotten. Here, here. Putting together a shoebox is easy, and this small gesture of kindness is very much appreciated. This shoebox project helps such organizations as the Barry Women and Children's Shelter and the Elizabeth Fry Society of Simcoe County. Speaker, although this event in Barry is over, I encourage everyone in this house to fill a box and deliver it in your community by visiting www.shoeboxproject.com. Also, the Women's Caucus of this Legislature is collecting boxes to distribute to shelters and to Syrian refugees. Good news, you can still take part if you deliver filled shoe boxes to room 340 by noon on Monday, December 7. Thanks to Shannon Murray, the local coordinator for the Simcoe County Project, and all of the volunteers and contributors involved in this project for the work that they do to help these women have their own special parcel on Christmas morning. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. 
Speaker, last week the Premier came to Perth Wellington to attend the Mitchell Rotary Club's Rural Urban Night. I'm glad she was able to visit one of the communities that I have the privilege to represent. The Premier spoke about the illusion of a rural-urban gap, but unfortunately it is not entirely an illusion. In fact, my first resolution as an MPP dealt with this issue. I called on the government to reevaluate policies that negatively affect residents of rural and small-town Ontario. It's now four years later, and the government is nowhere close to bridging the rural-urban gap. There are many examples. Our municipalities still bear the brunt of provincial funding cuts. The provincial government slashed the Ontario Municipal Partnership Fund. Three years ago, the government abruptly cancelled the Connecting Links program, even though it was working. They recently revived the program, but at a fraction of its previous funding. And now it appears that the municipalities will have to compete for funds they need to maintain provincial, provincial infrastructure. In Mitchell, the Premier joked about the municipality of West Perth applying 11 times for the same project under connecting links. Speaker, the people I represent aren't laughing. The Premier is aware of the need for a new bridge. Why should the municipality have to apply 11 times and counting? Whether it's health care policies, energy policies, or infrastructure funding programs, this government has turned its back on rural Ontario. It's time they change course. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you, Senator Member Sainz, the member from Scar Scarborough Southwest. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As part of our government's ongoing support of student achievement and well-being, I'm pleased to rise today and speak on an important funding announcement that took place in my riding earlier this month. I was delighted to announce that Blessed Cardinal Newman, a local Catholic high school, has been approved for $30 million for a new replacement facility. This project is part of Ontario's ambitious capital priority plan, which includes the construction of new facilities and a strong commitment for significant improvements to existing schools. Good, hardworking member, too. The new, the new state of the art complex will provide 1,110 local students with an engaging and modern educational environment. Mr. Speaker, Blessed Cardinal Newman School has been serving the community of Scarborough Southwest for over 40 years and has deservedly earned a strong reputation for excellence in academics, the arts, and, af and athletics. It offers specialist high skill major programs, advanced placement courses, extended French, and a gifted enrichment program. This funding will allow Blessed Cardinal Newman to continue serving the local community and will create immeasurable benefits for students and local residents. Mr. Speaker, supporting education is one of the most effective ways we have to ensure a successful and prosperous future for everyone in Ontario. I'm proud that Ontario continues to emphasize the value of a world-class education system. And I look forward to more announcements in the future as we continue to support and invest in students and their families. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Further members statements? The member from Newmarket, Aurora. Oh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, November 21st was National Sports Day in Canada. Sport is part of our nation's identity. Sure it teaches, a, teaches us a, a healthy lifestyle, leadership. It builds bridges between people of all ages, backgrounds, and abilities. In Newmarket Aurora, the community understands the importance of sport. It brings people together. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to stand here today to acknowledge both the Newmarket and Aurora Sports Hall of Fame's inductees for 2015. Both of these organizations are dedicated to recognizing sports excellence in the community. The 2015 inductees for the Aurora Sports Hall of Fame include Alan Dean, who, despite losing his leg, is actively involved in the Aurora Youth Soccer Club, both as a competitor and a coach. Mark Hees, a three-time Olympian who won a bronze medal in beach volleyball in the 1996 Summer Olympics in Atlanta. Uh, Keith Sinclair, who founded and built the Timberlane Tennis and Country Club in 1987, and Lowell McClenney, who anchored the best cable TV sports show going called Sports Beat Aurora, which filled the airwaves with local sports events unique to Aurora. I'd also like to recognize the inductees to the Newmarket Sports Hall of Fame, Jimmy Brennan, the former captain of Toronto FC, Joe Murphy, a former first overall selection in the NHL who went on to win the Stanley Cup in 1990 with the Oilers, Runner Andrew Coates, the 1909 Talagu lacrosse team, and Margaret Davies and Sally Bryce, who founded the Newmarket Figure Skating Club in the 1950s. Congratulations to all. Thank you. Thank you. 